Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician. And for the next hour or so, we're going to be discussing a proper human diet and what that means exactly. I'm going to be taking questions from you. So if you have a question pertaining to your health, your nutrition, anything related to those two topics, now is the time to ask your question. We have several coaches uh, in the in the chat. If you see someone with a blue wrench beside their name, they are a primal health coach. They're certified. They are coaches inside of our private group. They'll be answering obvious uh, newbie questions. So if you're just waking up to a proper human diet, to a ketogenic diet, ketovore diet, carnivore diet, lion diet, they answer questions uh, just like it came out of my mouth. They've been with us for years now. They know exactly how I'm going to answer questions. And so you can take what they say to the bank. Of course, none of this is medical advice. I don't know you. I don't know your medical history, your medication list. So keep that in mind as we answer questions. Rodney's watching. Oh, sorry, Rodney. I missed you. Where'd you go? These are going by fast. Rodney is watching from Cibolo, Texas. Where are you joining me from? What city? What state? What country? Tell me in the con in the comments. Don't be shy. You can just type in a comment at any time. Nobody's going to yell at you. I welcome questions from all comers. If you are a vegan or a vegetarian, I welcome your questions as well. We can even dig into some anthropology, archaeology, paleoanthropology. I am by no means an expert in those fields, but I have done quite a bit of reading in those uh, fields of expertise, trying to rediscover a proper human diet. Roxanne, whoa, man, they're going fast today. Where'd you go, Roxanne? Roxanne's watching from Slovakia. I don't know if we've had anybody. From Slovakia, there's Franklin, Texas, Scottsboro, Alabama. Hey, neighbor, Little Rock, Arkansas. Hey, neighbor, how's it going? Uh, I am in a at an undisclosed location in the hills of Tennessee. That's where I'm currently broadcasting from. Uh, here's a good question. C. Morton says, "How effective is the carnivore diet for multiple sclerosis?" Good question from Texas. Um, there is no research currently looking at a carnivore diet and how it impacts MS, but we have had multiple people diagnosed with MS by MR of the brain, MRI, and they report a decrease in the severity of the symptoms, a lessening of flare-ups or MS attacks, and a decreased need for the medication typically prescribed to people with MS. That's that's what we're hearing from people, but we need some research on this. So if there are any researchers watching, please look into the MS question because it's a, a big question. Anna's having trouble getting past the sugar cravings. Uh, Anna, this is very common, okay? You're not alone in this. Uh, we have hundreds of people in our private community who identify as a sugar addict. I, I am a sugar addict. Hi, I'm Ken. I'm a sugar addict. Uh, I know this. And so the, the, the further I stay away from sugar in all its forms and the longer I stay away from sugar, the easier it is to ignore the craving. And I still have the craving to this day. If someone brought a hot fudge cake in here, I would be like, hmm, you know, I could just have a little bite. And I would start playing that middle game with myself. Uh, reach, research shows us that nobody quits smoking on the first try. Nobody quits crack cocaine on the first try unless they're incarcerated and have no choice. It takes most people four, five, six times, four or five or six tries to break an addiction. Okay. And this is, this goes, this applies perfectly to sugar addiction as well. So if you're currently a sugar addict, step one is to look in the mirror and say, hey, you're a sugar addict. It's okay. We're going we're gonna to work around this. We're going to break this addiction. A lot of people forget that, that all carbohydrates, especially processed, ground up, 
grains in processed foods are very habit forming. They're actually designed to be habit forming. The food chemists and the food engineers try to get a perfect combination of sugar, fat, usually vegetable seed oil fat, and salt. And this is called the bliss point where you just can't eat just one. They literally engineer the food. So if you think you're doing your family or your kids a favor by buying them their favorite snack, realize that well-paid food chemists and engineers have spent years perfecting that Franken food so that you can't j eat just one. It is going to lead to addiction if you keep it in your house long enough. Good questions today. Crystal is 188 days into the carnivore diet and has never felt better. Too many issues resolved and being resolved to stop now. Thanks, Dr. B. And that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Once you get past that sugar addiction, yeah, it's going to suck going through the three to 14 days where you have to just cold turkey, no, no carbs at all until you break that addiction. It's going to suck. It's not going to be fun. You're probably going to fail one or two or five or six or seven times. That's okay. That's part of the healing process. Part of breaking the addiction is failing a few times, not on purpose, of course. But we're all human. We all fall short, and that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about that. Just get started again tomorrow morning. All right. Sino loves my shirt. You can actually get your own proper human diet shirt. There's a link down in the show notes. I think it says PhD merch. Uh, we've got a shirt that says beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And then we got a, uh, a shirt for you guys who have broke the sugar addiction. Because every time something good happens around here, we say, huzzah! It says huzzah on the shirt. Crazy K. Hey, doctor, when doing carnivore or keto, my AFib acts up more. Any way to minimize these symptoms? So this can be true when you first start. When you first change from one diet to any other diet, it can cause temporary electrolyte abnormalities, and that can absolutely make AFib flare up a little bit uh, more than it would otherwise. But once you're past the transition phase, once your fluid balances uh, have leveled out, once your electrolytes have calmed down, the what we, what we get feedback from all the time, Crazy K, is people saying, you know, I used to have AFib, but I never have flare-ups anymore on keto or carnivore. Amy, type one, insulin only uh, Insulin only goes and eats peanut butter and jelly. What's bettered? Mm, I don't understand this question, Amy. You're type one diabetic, insulin only. Um, you shouldn't eat peanut butter and jelly. All three of those things, peanut butter, jelly, and the bread, all break down immediately into sugar. Before you swallow them, when you're chewing up the PB&J in your mouth, all of the starch is breaking down into sugar. When you swallow it, it is nothing. It's just a sugar bullet, a sugar nuclear missile headed straight for your gastrointestinal system. Stop eating PB&J. Nobody needs a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There is no meaningful nutrition in it whatsoever. If a nutritionist or a dietitian has told you that Peanut butter is a great source of protein. That's a huge red flag. Luis, any testimonies uh, to those with ALS? We've had a few people with ALS, typically family members, saying when, when my family member with ALS uh, eats keto or carnivore, uh, their symptoms are improved. They're less severe. And it seems like the progression is slowed down. This is true of any neurological condition. There are multiple studies ongoing as we speak about keto and Alzheimer's, keto and other forms of dementia, keto in Huntington's disease, ALS. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other that I know about. But this is this is a very hotly researched area right now because it seems like we don't, and we're not sure. Is it the ketones that come from a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet? Or is it what you're removing from your diet that helps the symptoms of Alzheimer's and other dementias and ALS and Huntington's and Parkinson's? That's the other one I was trying to think of. Yeah. But we've gotten feedback from many people with those conditions or family members caring for someone with those conditions. Anna, oh, Ann, 
And how are grams of protein calculated? <clears throat> well, this is a very rough calculation. It's basically a guesstimate because you never know exactly how many grams of protein are in a food that you're about to eat. All you can do is, is guesstimate from the charts. Uh, most experts that I respect say that you need to eat somewhere between one gram of protein per kilogram of ideal body weight daily, all the way up to one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight daily. I think somewhere in between those, if you do the calculation, that's where your ideal protein macro is going to come in. Keep in mind your, your protein, your ideal protein macro is an ever shifting number. It, you need more if you work out, you need less if you're sedentary, you need more if you're sick, you need less if you're very healthy. There's multiple things that, that contribute. Even your altitude, what altitude are you at? That affects your, your protein need as well. Stephanie, will this diet really help uh, depression, mental health issues? This is the other hot research area right now, uh, Stephanie. Multiple studies going on right now. Chris Palmer just wrote a book called Brain Energy. He is a Harvard-trained psychiatrist who fully is fully seen the benefits of a ketogenic diet, even even help put uh, even helping to put severe schizophrenia into remission. But uh, depression, anxiety, OCD, they seem to respond within days of starting a, a high-fat ketogenic diet or a high-fat carnivore diet. Absolutely, you need to give this a 90-day try. Absolutely. Uh, yes, Joey, tomorrow is my birthday. I will be 55 years young, the double nickel. So not my birthday today, but tomorrow is my birthday. Absolutely. Thanks, Amy. Diseed, A1C 5.2. That's brilliant. Thanks to Carnivore and your YouTube. Was over 11. Diseed's A1C was 11 for a decade. Ugh, that makes me very sad to hear. But you fixed it now. As I heal from the damage caused by diabetes, am I spared from further damage? Yes, you are. You are. You have literally decrease the amount of damage that you're doing to your body by 97%, if not more. Absolutely. And what that's going to do is it's going to give the damaged parts of your body the chance, the ability to heal somewhat. Now, some of this damage from a decade of having uncontrolled type 2 diabetes, some of this damage is probably permanent, more than you would wish, but probably less than you would expect. A lot of this damage will reverse if you stay strict carnivore, strict ketogenic, strict ketovore, and keep that A1C at 5.2 or there, thereabouts, you're going to keep noticing improvements in your health. Absolutely. Don, 58-year-old male, 26 months carnivore, zero carbs, 99% of the time. Uh, recent A1C, 5.7. Last two years was 5.2. Why the rise? So, the carnivore diet is so nutrient dense that we hypothesize that it actually allows your red blood cells to live longer because they're they're built so well out of such good building material. And so uh, what that allows, so instead of your red blood cells living about 110 days, which is the average, they might be living 130, 140 days. And that gives them more time to glycate. So you might have a falsely elevated A1C in that in that case. This doesn't happen to all carnivores, but we do see this in a few. And what I recommend you do, Don, is have a glycated albumin checked because albumin is just a molecule. It's not a living cell. And so it's it's going to it's going to spend the amount of time it spends in your bloodstream. Whereas red blood cells, we know there are multiple things that make red blood cells live shorter periods of time or longer periods of time. That's well documented in the medical research. Thank you very much, Beth. Sharon says, 65 year old active female, 127 pounds carnivore for 110 days. Blood pressure will not go lower than 155 over 105 on average. Uh, body weight solid, kidney function good. What else do I need to do? Seems odd to me that my blood pressure should be the same as an NFL football player. And so, you need to watch my video about causes of secondary hypertension, almost without exception in somebody who's eating a strict ketogenic diet, strict carnivore diet, 
we see their blood pressure go back down to very either normal or very close to normal. And yours is well above what we would consider normal. And so watch my video about causes of secondary hypertension, write all those potential causes down and then go see your doctor and say, hey, are you sure I don't have secondary hypertension? Because the vast majority of people, 95% of people uh, have primary or essential hypertension, which effectively means they just have hyperinsulinemia. And it's making them hold anywhere from five to 25 pounds of unhealthy fluid on their body. And that's causing their blood pressure to go up. It's not the salt you're eating. It's the hyperinsulinemia from eating too many carbohydrates that causes the vast majority of high blood pressure. But now there are about one, one person out of five is what the research shows that uh, we think has essential hypertension or primary they actually have secondary hypertension. They have a problem with their adrenal glands or with their renal arteries or with the, the renal parenchyma, and they need to see a specialist and get this figured out. So talk to your doctor about that. Michelle, hey, Dr. B, I still feel fatigue on carnivore diet. been on carnivore for six months. Any suggestions why I still feel tired? Uh, three things almost always answer this. Either, number one, you're still portion controlling, Michelle and you're not eating to your hunger. You're not, you're not eating until you're comfortably stuffed. That's what you get to do on carnival. You don't have to worry about portions or macros or anything. You don't stop eating until you're comfortably stuffed. Uh, many women, some men, still hear that voice in the back of their head saying, oh, that's too big of a portion. Don't eat that. Don't take that much. Don't eat that much. No, you're a carnivore. You eat till you're comfortably stuffed, until you cannot comfortably eat another bite. That's number one. Number two is... Your carnivore diet may not be high enough in fat. Uh, fat is very healthy, very good for you. It is not bad for you in any way, especially animal fat. Add more fat to your carnivore diet. Next is salt. Are you salting your food enough? Are you salting it until it tastes very tasty salty? If not, I would bump up the salt. And then finally, electrolytes. You may not be getting enough magnesium and potassium. This can sometimes contribute to that. Then finally, you may have an undiagnosed medical condition that has nothing to do with your diet. If you haven't already had the full lab panel checked by your doctor, you need to go do that. And uh, what most doctors consider a full lab panel is by no means a full lab panel. That's why uh, Kim Howerton and I wrote this book, Common Sense Labs. There's a link down in the show notes. And so if your doctor checks a few labs and says, oh, everything's fine, that's not a full panel. You need more labs checked than that. And we go over every lab you need in the Common Sense Labs book. Colorado Bird Nerd. Struggling to get rid of psoriasis, taking your advice and starting keto. Clean the junk out of the cabinets and fridge today and happy birthday. Yes, this is ketogenic for, for most people with psoriasis. If you're strict, real food, whole food, one ingredient keto, which means if, if it didn't grow in the dirt or graze on something that grew in the dirt, you don't need it. If it comes in a plastic wrapper or a cardboard box, that's not keto. If it says keto on the package, that's definitely not keto. Okay, that's a marketing term. Keto means half of your plate is covered with fatty meat. Half of your plate is covered with low-carb veg, a few nuts, a few berries. That's keto, okay? Ketovore is three quarters of your plate covered with fatty meat. One quarter of your plate, veg, maybe a few nuts, maybe a few berries, okay? Carnivore is 100% of your plate covered with fatty meat, and you eat until you're full. So most people, when they adopt a real ketogenic diet, the psoriasis gets substantially better. Sometimes goes completely away. Not that you're cured. You still have the propensity to redevelop the psoriasis should you be in a stressful situation, get sick, or start eating crap again. It'll come back. But as long as you eat a proper human diet, keto's part of a proper human diet. So is ketovore, so is carnivore. Uh, then some people find that keto helps, but it's not enough. They go ketovore, it gets even better. For some people, that's that's perfect. Other people need to go carnivore with psoriasis or eczema uh, in order to, to have complete resolution. So you've, you've started the journey. This is excellent. Huzzah. And I think you're going to be very happy you made this decision. And you also realize that all that junk you threw away from the cabinets in the fridge, that was not a waste of money. 
That was an investment in your health. Ah, oh, Richard, thank you very much. Tomorrow's my birthday, guys. Not today, but but I'll be 55 years old. Do I look 55? I don't know. Maybe. I can't tell. Single barrel, do you have any recommendations on electrolyte mixtures for someone that works outside year-round in Texas? Is sea salt enough by itself? So real sea salt only has sodium and chloride in, in any amount. It has very tiny amounts of, of minerals. Maybe a tiny amount of electrolytes, probably not. You need to eat salt with your meals, uh, but you need electrolytes if you're outside sweating all day. Okay, my my go to electrolyte right now is Element, L-M-N-T. I think there may be a discount code in the show notes. I'm not sure. Um, but that they, they have an unflavored version uh, because I fatten very easily. And even even the sugar free flavors like orange and stuff, they taste delicious. But for me, it raises my insulin enough that it'll keep me from uh keeping my weight at, at an ideal weight. Uh, just got off the scale this morning. I'm 225 pounds, which makes me very happy because when I started this journey, what, nine years ago, I weighed 297 pounds. I was pre-diabetic, had rosacea, had dandruff, severe heartburn, knee pain, uh, chronically irritated and pissed off by everything. Uh, all that's gone now. And I weigh 225 pounds, which I'd, I'd like to weigh 220. That'd be fine. But I'm very, very happy with 225. Six foot three, 225. What's my BMI? So salt, definitely get plenty of salt, single barrel. But that's probably not going to be enough. You're going to need some electrolytes too. Dark Buddhist, I loved getting a huzzah last time. Thought my life uh, is over with an A1C of 13 at 30 years of age. God, that's so terrible. Going blind, infections all over my body. Doc said I'm stuck with insulin forever. But six months into ketovore, my A1C is 5.4. And I'm only taking glucophage right now. And with an A1C of 5.4, Dark Buddhist, you can stop the glucophage. That's not medical advice, but I'm not afraid to tell you with an A1C of 5.4, you don't need the glucophage anymore. Just keep eating ketovore. That's all you need. Okay. 30 years old and had an A1C of 13. Uh, dark Buddhist wouldn't have lived to, wouldn't have made it to 40 without something disastrous happening. Had Dark Buddhist not heard about Ketavor from somebody on social media, guaranteed. How did he hear about that? It could very well have been that someone shared one of my videos and he's like, who's this crazy redneck talking about eating meat? He watched it and he's like, hmm, I'm going to give that a try. And now he's back on the road to, to optimal health. So if you haven't already done so, please click that share button and share this on your favorite social media so that somebody just like Dark Buddhist sitting there with an A1C of 13 or even 14 thinking, well, I'm on insulin for life. I'm screwed. I'm just going to have these infections and boils and I'm going to go blind and be impotent, have my foot cut off, be on dialysis, have a heart attack, be in the nursing home. No, no, none of that stuff's necessary. Share this video and help me reach new people so that they don't have to suffer. Thank you. And hit that thumbs up while you're at it. That tells YouTube that you think this content is valuable and they'll send it out to new people. What's better for LBS, low, low blood sugar? I got you. What's better for low blood sugar than a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Not much because peanut butter and jelly sandwich is pure sugar. Now, here's the thing, Amy. If you do have low blood sugar, you don't need to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. All you need is one bite of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Chew it up, swallow it. That will fix your low blood sugar. Okay. Unless you've injected, uh, over injected 50 units of insulin, one, one mouthful of peanut butter and jelly sandwich is going to fix your low blood sugar. Does that make sense? A lot of people think, oh, I need to drink a glass of orange juice or have five tablespoons of honey or eat a whole set. No. One big swallow of orange juice is all it takes to spike your blood sugar. One bite of peanut butter and jelly sandwich. That's all it takes. Okay. Doesn't take much because they're so full of sugar. Janet, I started uh, carnivore about three weeks ago. Can I stop taking my sodium citrate that I take to, to melt uric acid uh, kidney stones? No, keep taking your, your sodium citrate. 
you still need that at least for now. Now, after you've been on carnivore for three or six months, go see your doctor who prescribed that and say, look, I'm eating this diet now that's supposed to not allow kidney stones to form. Uh, can I tr take a trial and try not taking this for a few months and see what happens? The crazy carnivore. What's the proper fat to protein ratio to lose weight on carnivore plateau about 265 to 270 pounds? What's the proper fat to protein Oh, he typed it twice. Okay. So what the vast majority of people who give me feedback is crazy carnivore is that if they have a, a weight loss plateau or stall, which means your weight hasn't changed in three months, not three days or three weeks, three months, then bump up your fat. That's the first step that, that un, unsticks a stall for most people. Keeping in mind that there's many reasons, some of which are medical, that your weight loss might be stalled. I have a video called The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall. And so try high fat carnivore. Really bump up the fat. Put some butter on it. Okay. Eat more bacon. Cook everything in bacon grease or in butter. And really bump up that fat and see if that helps. If that doesn't help after a few weeks, then you can try a lower fat, higher protein carnivore. For some few people, that seems to work. And I'm not opposed to either method. I just want I just want you to unstick this weight, weight loss stall. Carnivore's werewolf, 15 months on carnivore, down from 267 to 188 pounds. Blood pressure, awesome. Blood work, amazing. If this trucker can do it, anyone can. Now, you understand a trucker, I assume Carnivore's Werewolf is an over-the-road trucker, which means uh, he or she sits on their butt for hours a day. And unlike me sitting on my butt, I, I can stand up and sit down and, and do some jumping jacks or any number of things. You can't do that when you're driving a truck. You get a ticket, cause a wreck. Uh, so the, he's basically, with without much exercise at all, lost how much weight? From 267 to 188. So 67, 80, 67, 77, 80 pounds as a truck driver sitting on his butt eating meat. I'm trying to help my fellow truckers regain their health. Please, this, this is a huge place where, where so many people are diabetic and obese and they're like, I'm a truck driver. What can I do? Well, first thing you can do is the only thing you eat from truck stops is hot dogs, hamburger patties, hot dogs without the bun, hamburger patties without the bun and boiled eggs, and meat skins. That's the only thing you get at a truck stop. Nothing else. Beef jerky. That's it. All that other crap. That's what's giving you obesity and diabetes. It's not the sitting on your butt. Carnivore's werewolf's lost 80 pounds sitting on his butt. Exercise does not help you lose weight. Exercise does not help you lose fat. It's very good for you healthy for you in hundreds of ways, but it's not going to help you with weight loss. You got to fix the diet. You got to cut the carbs. You got to cut them drastically. Are all you guys subscribed to the channel? I've had people telling me that they thought they were subscribed, but then they looked and they weren't. So look and make sure that that the, you've already clicked that subscribe button because I don't know what's going on with that, but I've been getting that report. Thank you, BG. Luis, when you say ketovore, what foods aside from meat are okay? So it's less than 10 total grams of carbohydrates a day. And uh, this can be 10 grams of, of fruit, 10 grams of nuts, 10 grams of berries, 10 grams of any vegetable that you really love. Typically, my wife, Nisha, is a, is a ketovore. And typically her 10 grams a day comes from chopped up onion, chopped up garlic, little garnish, basically, that, that you know, enhances the flavor of the food. Jesse been doing the lion diet for about a month now, and my tri triglycerides have almost doubled to 199. Also, my HDL has dropped from 40 to 35. Any suggestions? Also, happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, did you fast for 12 to 14 hours before you had this blood work? That's a very common mistake that people, they, they think their doctor tells them, you don't have to fast anymore for blood work, which is not true. It's a big fat lie. You need to fast from 12 to 14 hours if you're going to have your triglycerides checked. If you're having your blood sugar checked, your HDL cholesterol checked. 
12 to 14 hour fast before you have blood drawn. If you fast for too long, it can actually make your triglycerides go up. Triglycerides change from minute to minute. Could be any number of things that cause this. You may not have slept well the night before. You may have a little viral infection, any number of things. So I'd just get it rechecked again in a month or so, Jesse, and make sure you fast for 12 to 14 hours before you have it drawn. X Devil Dog, X 50 years old, 20 days doing carnivore. I have I haven't felt this good in 20 years. I mean, come on, guys. How many people have to say it before you give it a try? The weight I've lost, how much of that loss is muscle as opposed to fat? Good question. Because anytime you're losing a lot of weight, some of it's going to be lean, lean mass that you're losing. But on keto, ketobore, and carnivore, it seems that these diets spare muscle more than most other diets. You're going to lose main, mostly fat on keto, ketovore, carnivore. And we've had people verify this with DEXA scans uh, multiple times. Jamie, Dr. B, I've been diagnosed with uh, limited systemic scleroderma. Is carnivore going to help? It is going to slow down progression and lessen the severity of the symptoms. This goes for virtually any condition that's autoimmune in nature or as a result of chronic inflammation or is a result of hyperinsulinemia. Carnivore is going to slow down progression and decrease severity of symptoms. Roshifim. Hey, doctor, I'm taking Losartan and Amlodipine. Should I consider intermittent fasting to get lower blood pressures? Yeah, uh, I would I would fast for 18 hours a day and then eat two either keto meals or ketovore or carnivore meals during your six-hour feasting window. And we call it a feasting window because you're going to eat until you're comfortably stuffed. But you're going to eat very, very low carbohydrate. And then fast for 18 hours, then two meals in a six-hour window, then fast for 18 hours. There's, this is going to lower your blood pressure uh, to some degree. Now, for some people, it lowers it right back to normal within just a week or two. Some people, it takes a few months and it lowers it almost back to normal, but not, not quite. What you're going to notice is you'll probably be able to stop one of these blood pressure medicines with the help of your doctor after a few months of this. Ashley says, I only look 45. I'll take that. Thank you, Ashley. Darla. I'm on day 12 of carnivore, and one of the main things I've noticed is that my tinnitus is no longer noticeable. Mm -hmm. Tinnitus is very strongly linked to hyperinsulinemia and chronic inappropriate inflammation. Carnivore diet takes care of both of those things within 12 days. Thank you for all your help and support, and happy early birthday. Thank you very much, Darla. Uh, how many of you guys know somebody with severe tinnitus? I've got a YouTube video about tinnitus on my channel. And here's Darla's comment. Maybe take a screenshot of this and send it to someone with tinnitus and say, did you know that a carnivore diet, this chick's tinnitus is gone? You got the screenshot? Okay. Dottie's World, any advice for emotional eating? My granny just passed away and it's been really hard not to eat emotionally. Yeah, I uh, totally get it. Shout out to Ace. Um, hey, Ace, how's it going? This is this is hard when you have a big loss like this. <clears throat> one of the ways that we've been taught our entire life to cope with trauma or drama or a big loss is to smother ourselves in food. Right. When somebody passes away in the family, very often at the wake or at the get together afterwards, everybody brings a dish and it's usually not keto or carnivore friendly because they want to make you feel better. They were trying to, and, and in, in reality, nothing's going to make you feel better. You've got to go through the stages of grief and loss. It sucks. And I'm sorry, Donnie. But when you lose somebody you love, it hurts and it's going to hurt and it's supposed to hurt. That's the first step. It has to hurt. You have to grieve. You have to cry. You have to be lonely. You have to miss them. You have to do all that shitty work. It sucks. I, I know. But you have to do that so that you can heal emotionally and, and again return to being an emotionally balanced and happy person sometime in the future. So please, guys, I know it's tempting. I know you want to you think if I just smash this box of donuts, it's almost like drinking a fifth of vodka, isn't it? I can, I can I'll have such a sugar buzz that. It, it kind of numbs the pain, just like 
smoking some weed or drinking a fifth of vodka or smoking something else you shouldn't be smoking. But that doesn't fix anything. It masks it, hides it. It also, more importantly, keeps you from dealing with it. you got to face it. It hurts, but you got to grab it by the throat and just go through the pain. That's the only way to heal. I'm very sorry for your loss, but don't don't let the junk food trick you into thinking that it's somehow helping something. It's just making things worse. Thank you, Mike, very much. Thank you, John. Thomas, I just had some blood work done. My HDL cholesterol is 63. My triglycerides are 63. This guy's a carnivore right here. Uh, total cholesterol, 300. My A1C went from 5.5 .5 to 5.6, which is still normal, still better than 88% of the U.S. adult population. Could I be eating ingredient, eat, eating too much fat? Is that what you mean? Uh, no, no. Fat doesn't make your uh, A1C go up. Either you've had a little bit of carbohydrate creep or this is just lab error. As long as your A1C is under 5.7, I have no complaints. Okay. It is better for it to be lower, but 5.5, 5.6, that's that's within lab error. That's essentially the same number. So huzzah. Keep it, keep doing what you're doing. Luis taking uh, taking creatinine okay in ketivore. So Luis, do you know what is a wonderful source of creatinine, the best creatinine supplement in the world? Do you know, Luis? Meat. Meat is full of creatinine. Okay? Don't waste your money on a creatinine supplement. A creatine, I'm sorry, a creatine supplement. Don't waste your money on that. You don't need it. Okay? Meat has creatine in it. Now, the creatine manufacturers would love for you to believe that meat, well, it only has a tiny bit of creatine. You need more than that. Keep in mind that all of the, the strong men that we've seen photographs of before 1965 never took a creatine supplement ever, okay? All of the strong men that you see now in the pages of Muscle and Fitness and Muscle Mag, they're taking creatine, yes, but they're also taking steroids and all kinds of other um, human growth hormone, all kinds of things that are illegal that you shouldn't be taking either. It's not the creatine, okay? Eat your meat and lift heavy things. That's what you need. Uh, looking to recover from my uh, concussion, there's creatine in meat. Been doing ketivore for two weeks. You're a rookie, and that's fine. Keep asking these questions, Luis, okay? That's how you're going to learn. Uh, these are the kind of questions that get asked every day in our private group. Uh, we have a community of over 6,000 people, just like Luis now, who are part of our private community. There's a link in the show notes, but you can ask this kind of question, and you've got me answering, you've got Nisha answering, and you've got nine different primal health coach certified coaches answering your questions in the group. And then also thousands of other people just like you who've got your same story. They're like, oh, yeah, I had that. I'll, I'll tell you what I did. Consider becoming a member of our private group. There's a link in the show notes. Well, hey, Dr. Barry, is there any way you, a person, could possibly reverse Wernicke's encephalopathy? I had pancreatitis in June, uh, kept going to the ER. Um, you need to follow up with your neurologist about that. There's nothing about a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet that's going to make Wernicke's any worse. It may, in fact, help your body heal, okay? But you need to follow up with neurology for that one. And also, keto and carnivore is going to decrease your risk of having another bout of pancreatitis. Uh, you need to never drink another drop of alcohol. You need to never drink another drop of liquid containing fructose. Your pancreas does not like that, nor does your liver. Noel, I'm 54 tomorrow, 80 pounds overweight, and I'm joining CrossFit program in January. Will intermittent fasting on carnivore help with weight loss? Yes, it will. Now, Noel, I'm fine with you joining CrossFit, but I don't want you to join CrossFit if you think it's going to help you lose weight, because it is not. 
carnivore and a, a 18 hour fast and then two carnivore meals in a six hour window, you're going to lose just as much weight doing that as if you do that and join CrossFit. Now, if you want to get healthy and get fit and build muscle, yes, CrossFit, yes, do that. But don't waste your money on CrossFit if you're just joining to lose weight. It will not help you do that. Okay, but it will it'll help you uh, bec become in better shape to become stronger, to build muscle. But start slow, start low and go slow or you wind up injuring yourself like many thousands of people have done at CrossFit. Don't get crazy. OK, you've been sedentary for a minute now. Don't think you can go back to 100 percent in a week or two. You cannot do that. You'll hurt yourself. Two carnivore meals in a six-hour feeding window, a six-hour feasting window, and then an 18-hour fast after that. Repeat every day. The weight will fall off. Hey, Heidi, thank you very much. Vicky, heavy in the 220s for decades. No kids. Always carried a lot of lower abdominal fat, but it appears I am now also carrying a lot of fat above the belly button. Same weight. Is this a normal postmenopausal thing. So definitely when you go through menopause, you can carry fat at different places on your body, carry it in different distributions. That's very common. I would like for you not to be carrying all this fat, Vicki. And so if you like meat and veg, then watch my Keto 101 playlist and start implementing that into your daily way of eating. If you could just eat meat and eggs and be happy with that, then watch my Carnivore 101 playlist here on YouTube and implement that and make that your way of eating. And then you won't have to worry about being 220 pounds anymore. <clears throat> Matt, meeting uh, my doctor Monday, which blood test would you request if you were told you have cirrhosis? Uh, went from no fibrosis to cirrhosis in eight months. So there's a, a there's a, Big list of liver labs, definitely a complete metabolic panel, definitely a GGT, AST, ALT, um, total protein, albumin, globulin, all that that comes in a CMP, plus a GGT. Uh, you definitely need a fibro scan. You may need a, a, a CAT scan or an MRI of the abdomen. You may need a liver biopsy. Any of that stuff is fair game if, uh, if you have cirrhosis. Emily, I had a total hysterectomy four years ago. Now I find out I'm also type 2 diabetic currently. My doctor told me, do not do carnivore. Something totally confused on what to do. My triglycerides are over 1,100. Yeah, and Emily, your doctor means well, but is currently ignorant. Uh, pick keto, ketovore, carnivore, whichever sounds delicious to you, whichever one you say, yeah, I can definitely stick to that because I want you for the next 90 days to do strict keto, strict ketovore, or strict carnivore. I've got videos on all three on this channel. My wife, Nisha, is a ketovore. Uh, if you go to her YouTube channel, she, you can actually see what she cooks and what we eat. N-E-I-S-H-A. She's the number one Nisha on YouTube. And you can watch what we feed our kids, watch what we feed our dogs, uh, watch what she feeds her husband. It's me. But yeah, you, you can reverse your type 2 diabetes within 3 to 12 months. It'll be completely gone, depending on how strictly you stick to this. Okay, exercise is also going to help you reverse your type 2 diabetes quicker. Build some muscle, lift heavy things. Heavy for you, Emily, whatever that happens to mean currently. I have thalassemia minor. Is ketovore okay with me? Yes. If you Even if you had thalassemia major, you can absolutely eat a ketovore diet. Any human on the planet can eat a proper human diet, regardless of what medical condition they have, regardless of what body part they've had taken out, regardless of what they've been diagnosed with you can benefit from a proper human diet. What is a proper human diet? Well, I've got a guidebook that you can get a copy of for free that explains to you what a proper human diet is. It's down in the show notes. Just click on the guidebook link and I'll email you a free copy. Maybe you could take a copy of that to your doctor that said you definitely should not do carnivore to our previous question. 
Richard, I find I have to go line diet for a bit. Even fatty cuts of meat in is about 65 percentage fats. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some people eat 80 percent fat and they'll do episodes of that for one day or for a week. And then they'll go back to more of a one to one fat to protein ratio. Uh, or do I have to find a way to increase the fat percentage? No, I think going just bumping uh, bumping up the fat just a little, that's a good trial. If you're like, oh, yeah, I feel better when I do that, keep it right there. That's totally fine. Thank you, Julissa. Jesse, any changes that you would make for uh, MTHFRNs on carnivore? So if you have an MTHFR mutation and you don't metabolize uh folic acid or B12 the way that most people can. No, you're going to get, you're going to get all the B vitamins just like your body wants them to be on a carnivore diet. Now, if you're eating a nutrient void, highly processed standard American crap diet, if you're eating the diet that the American Diabetes Association recommends and you have the MTHFR mutation, then you probably need to take a methylated B complex supplement, a methylated B12 supplement. Yeah, because you're not going to be getting real B vitamins in that junk diet. IRSQ pets. If you got COVID today, what would you do to limit how bad you feel? I, depending on how bad of a case it was, if it was a mild case of COVID, I would keep right on doing everything I'm doing. That's exactly what I do when I get a cold or when I catch a mild flu, I just keep right on doing my farm work, doing my online work, doing my doctor work. Uh, I don't let it, I just ignore it. If I'm not hungry, I don't eat. And I think that's very important. Fasting is the thing you should do if you catch a virus. If, if any anything you have that you lose your appetite, listen to that. There's a reason for that. Okay. And, and unless you're severely undernourished, malnourished, cachectic, don't eat. If your body tells you not to eat, don't eat, okay? Any animal that gets sick or injured, they stop eating immediately. They know that's going to help them heal faster, okay? You need to do the same thing. Now, if I had a terrible case of COVID, I would go to bed, I would drink fluids with electrolytes, and I would just rest. I would still drag my butt out in the morning sun every morning and get morning sun. If it were summertime, I would get out and get lots of sun, get lots of, of vitamin D, uh, but it's there's not much sun here in Tennessee in December, so I would I would definitely make sure I was getting enough vitamin D three and K two. I would take my daily minerals, drink my electrolyte water, and lay in the bed until I started feeling better. Jess, I'm on day eight of carnivore. Can I start working out lifting heavy now, or should I wait a certain amount of time? No, you can start now. Keeping in mind, Jess, and all you guys watching this, all 2,400 of you. If you've been sedentary for a long time, your muscles have shrunk and you've put on fat. Yes. But the thing you need to understand, especially if you're over the age of 40, is that your ligaments, your tendons, your cartilage have been underused for a long period of time and they have gotten weaker. That was That's why I gave my previous warning to our friend who's going to start CrossFit. Your ligaments and tendons are weaker than they would be had you been doing CrossFit this entire time. And so, yes, Jess, start lifting heavy things being heavy to you. And so for some people, that's going to be two one-pound weights, right? Depends on where you're starting from. Five pounds, 10 pounds, 50-pound dumbbells. Whatever's heavy for you that you can push out about six to eight reps in pretty good form, that's a, that's a heavy weight for you. Where you're starting to fail on that ninth rep, that's, that's a heavy weight for you, okay? But don't overdo it. When you work out a muscle group and all the ligaments and tendons and connective tissue that go along with that muscle group, all that stuff needs time to rest before you work it out again. And a lot of people start, they're gung-ho, they work out the same body parts every day or days at a time, or they work out the same body part every other day, especially over the age of 40. You got to rest those body parts in between the workouts. Here's Dark Buddhist again. Have any advice for my girlfriend having multiple sclerosis? Now, I answered a question about multiple sclerosis earlier, Dark Buddhist. You may have missed it. Treatment damaged her thyroid and it's low now, uh, but no MS progression thanks to it. She won't do carnivore, 
but no seed oils and a lot more meat. Yeah, if she'll just bump up the red meat that she's eating, eliminate sugar, eliminate all grains, and eliminate all vegetable seed oils. Those are the three big steps to moving back to a proper human diet. Again, eliminate all sugar, eliminate all the grains, wheat, rice, oats, corn, millet, amaranth, quinoa, ghee, all that. Eliminate all vegetable seed oils, canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower, safflower, peanut oil, vegetable shortening, plant butter. Eat real butter, okay? If she'll just eliminate those three big categories and increase the amount of fatty red meat she's eating, that's going to improve her health markedly. Dawn, my grandmother-in-law, is getting knee surgery in the next couple of weeks. Uh, recommended Ensure and Gatorade for electrolytes. I want her to take daily minerals instead. Absolutely. So get her some Element, e, uh, L-M-N-T, Element. That's the electrolytes. And then get her some Keto Chow Shakes if she wants If she wants to drink a shake. she Even though she's getting knee surgery, she can still eat meat and eggs. I don't know why they want to put people on Ensure Shakes, which are basically melted sugary milkshakes. Ensure, for everybody listening, listen carefully. Ensure is junk food. Ensure Shakes are crap. You might as well give your loved one a yoo chocolate soda. Okay? Or just chocolate, chocolate milk is better for you than Insure Shakes. Insure is crap. Any doctor that recommends Insure from this day forward to any of you guys or your family members, I want you to say, isn't that just a blend of sugar and vegetable seed oils? Isn't that all that is? Why would I want to give that to somebody I care about? Doctors will shut up saying stupid shit if you guys call them out on it often enough, long enough. Okay? Insure is crap. Have I been clear about that? So get her some keto chow shakes if she just wants a shake. You can make it with the fat of your choice. A lot of their shakes now have beef isolate protein instead of whey protein, which I think is better. Uh, but she can eat meat and eggs even though she's having knee surgery. Daily minerals, electrolytes, fat and protein. That's what she needs. What will rehab accept? Oh, so if she's going to be like inpatient rehab on the swing bed, you can actually make up the keto chow shakes in a in a liter container or a gallon container, label it with her name, her room number, and the date it was prepared. And any good care provider in a in an assisted living place where she's doing rehab, they'll put that in the refrigerator. But you got to have her name on it, her room number, and the date it was prepared. That's kind of a, a Jayco thing. Joint commission, okay. Uh, you can you can make her up a, a, a gallon of electrolytes with the element and say, don't give her Gatorade. Give her this. Put her name, room number, and the date it was made, and they'll keep it in the fridge. Most caregivers in assisted living places, they want to help people, but their, their hands are tied. But if you're helpful to them and you provide them with what they need, they'll they'll be happy to do that. Sharon, should I avoid oxalate food since hyper uh, calcium? So you get high calcium in your blood. Doctor says not to worry about it since I don't have kidney stones. <coughs> Doctor, yeah. So, okay. First of all, any of you guys, if your calcium is high on a blood test, even one tenth of a point high, that needs to be evaluated. It's not okay that your calcium is just a little bit high. Okay. Calcium is one of the blood values that your body regulates very, very tightly. If you have hypercalcemia, high calcium, you either have undiagnosed hyperparathyroidism or you have cancer or you have some uh, a medicine that's making your calcium high that you're taking, either over the counter or prescription. You don't just have high calcium and it's no big deal. A lot of so many, I've got a video about this because so many doctors will be like, oh, it's just a little high. Don't worry about it. No, this is hyper parathyroidism until proven otherwise. Uh, I've seen doctors miss hyperparathyroidism for 20 years. And one of the symptoms of hyperparathy is kidney stones. 
but you don't have to have a kidney stone in order to prove that you have hyperparathyroidism. You need to get an ionized calcium checked. You need to get an intact PTH checked. Sharon, so go back and watch this part of the video again and write those things down and go back to your doctor and say, don't you need to check these two labs to make sure it's not my parathyroid glands? And your doctor will say, oh, oh yeah, 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 we'll check that. Thanks, doctor. Your calcium is just a little high, but don't worry about it because you don't have kidney stones. What the hell? <sighs> Guys, let me take this opportunity to apologize for doctors all over the world. Doctors can say the dumbest shit. I, I don't I don't understand it. I used to be the same way, but I'm not anymore. You doctors either need to do a good job or find another career. If you hate being a doctor and it's fine, just admit it. And go back to school. Be something else. Don't, don't be a doctor if you hate it. Don't be a doctor if you're not interested. If you're not just excited every day to go and see what you can find wrong with your patients and fix. If you're not curious, if you're not constantly learning about something in medicine, find another career. Being a doctor doesn't pay that well anymore anyway. It's not like you're getting rich. Find another career if you don't love it. And you don't eat, live, drink, and sleep it. Stop being this kind of doctor. This is this is unacceptable. KG Productions, what are your thoughts on APOB? There's actually some research in the in the pipeline right now that's going to blow up the APOB hypothesis. Right now, you know, for a long time it was oh, your total cholesterol is high, you're gonna die of a heart attack. Then they stopped talking about total cholesterol because it was completely disproven. Then they wanted to talk about, oh, your LDL is high. You're going to have a heart attack. And now, more and more, they're not talking about that anymore because that's not very sexy anymore. That's been effectively debunked. And now they're talking about APOB. Your APOB is high. You're going to die of a heart attack any minute. Just watch, wait and watch. Keep eating a proper human diet and watch for the research to come out. It won't be long at all before APOB goes down the TMAO hole. Do any of you guys remember TMAO? The plant-based people for a minute were really talking about TMAO because if you eat meat or fish, it makes your TMAO go up. Oh, you're going to have a heart attack. Your TMAO is high. You notice how nobody's talking about that anymore? It's because it was, it was a load of crap. Didn't prove anything. It's been completely debunked. And that's what's about to happen to April B as well. Uh, you won't find a detailed response because the April B measurement itself is still experimental in my uh, estimation. It's still a theoretical potential proxy marker for risk. That's what it is. And it's going to be completely shown that it has nothing to do. Now, some people like Peter Atia. And Dr. Lipid on Twitter say that APOB is causal. It literally causes heart attacks. That's definitely not true. And I think you're going to find here in the near future that it's not even a good proxy marker for your risk. Chris, my A1C has gone from 51 to 41. Basically, you stop eating ultra-processed food. Yeah, for many people, that's all it takes. Just stop the ultra-processed junk that's full of sugar and, and wheat sugar and corn, sugar and rice. And all that's for, for probably 50% of people, that's all they need to do and stop the vegetable seed oils and everything goes right back to normal. Some people need to do more. I uh, was only diabetic diagnosed for one year. Doctor says I can stop metformin, but should I? Yeah, I think so. Some people will say that metformin has other benefits. I'm not convinced. I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced that, that it has life extension benefits or cancer prevention benefits. I think that the, that metformin is a ketogenic diet mimicking drug. It, it, it does basically the same thing as eating a ketogenic diet does. So why not just eat a ketogenic diet and not waste your money on metformin? Oh, you were starting to get some neuropathy. So, so yeah, right now, you need to be on a proper human diet for the rest of your life because your body, that neuropathy was your body saying, Hey, Chris, you, you've pushed it enough. If you keep going, here's what's coming. 
you need to listen to your body, Chris. And be like, nope, there ain't no dessert worth it, worth having neuropathy. There ain't no mixed dr alcoholic drink worth having neuropathy. Uh-uh, no, no, I'm a human being and I'm going to eat a proper human diet from this day forward. Plus or minus the metformin, you make that decision. Hey, Dina, thank you very much. Plant sparing carnivore. Three months since contracting COVID, uh, concussion and depression like neurological symptoms persist. Gained six pounds uh, despite being carnivore. And this is, none of this surprises me. This happens. Uh, your metabolism is not broken, but it is currently mucked up. But this is temporary. Uh, ketone supplement any good? It's probably going to be a waste of your money. I would I would stick to carnivore and and persist and have some patience. Your body's going to recover from this. Okay, there's a lot of people out there trying to sell post COVID supplements or post jab supplements. Maybe probably they're not going to help you at all. They're probably a waste of money. Richard, vitamin D level at 10. Yes, that is very low. That is unhealthy. Opinion on this protocol, uh, D3, 9,500 I use, K2, 240, mag citrate, 400 to 800 milligram, all taken together once a day. Yeah, that's fine. And then get your, your vitamin D25 level checked again in three months. And if it's between 50 and 100, then you can start taking just 5,000 I use of, of D3 a day. Yeah, that's there's nothing. That's a good, but but make sure and recheck the level. Randy, recent calcium score of ninety nine. Doctor pushing statins. I refuse. Question: Could the buildup have occurred in my twenties when I had vitamin K deficiency? Uh, today, non drinker for twenty years, carnivore for five years. Uh, no, the buildup happened back when you were eating a crap diet, Randy. For all those decades that you were eating a crap diet. Uh, you might have had vitamin K deficiency in your 20s, but you also were eating a high carb junk diet, and that was causing inflammation in your arteri arteries, and that's what led to the, the calcium score. Okay, I would continue to eat carnivore and I would recheck that calcium score one every 12 months, just to mainly to teach your doctor so that when your, your calcium score, which should go up 20% a year, according to Dr. Agustin. Uh, who helped invent the CAC score test. The average person that's eating the standard American diet, their CAC score goes up 20% a year. And when yours doesn't do that, you can ask your doctor, Doc, why is my CAC score? I thought it's supposed to go up 20% a year, but mine stayed the same or went down a little bit. How do you explain that? That's how you help a doctor understand a proper human diet. All right, last question. I got to get off here and go play with my kids and get ready for my birthday party tomorrow. Casey Kamanu, six weeks carnivore, total cholesterol 231, trigs 99, HDL 43, uh, LDLC 168, non HDL 188, then a ratio. Uh, still waiting on my A1C. My cholesterol is up since last. Check, afraid doctor will lecture me. Yeah, your doctor's going to lecture you, but I don't care. As long as your A1C is getting better, your trigs are under 150, which they're well under that. Uh, eat more fatty red meat to get that HDL up even more and start lifting heavy things. That's going to help get that HDL up. I don't care what your total cholesterol is. I could care less. I don't care if, it, if, it's, if it's 200 or 500, it's irrelevant if all of your other metabolic markers are in the healthy range. Make sure they check the A1C, make sure it's going down, make sure they check the fasting insulin level and make sure it's going in the right direction as well, okay? Uh, if you guys want more live Q&As just like this, but instead of competing with 2,500 people to ask a question, would you love it if there were just 250 people? Well, that's what happens inside of our private community. OK, we go live in there multiple additional times each week and answer questions. OK, so if you'd like to cut line effectively and be able to get your questions answered for sure each time I'm live, consider becoming a member of our community. There's a link in the show notes. And if you'd like a copy of the Proper Human Diet Guidebook, you can get a free copy emailed to you. There's a link down in the show notes that says Guidebook. It will explain to you what a proper human diet is. That's it. And that's all. I won't talk to you again until 